Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Jack Ford. Tonight, we take a trip through some interviews that received television's highest honor, the Emmy. First on the docket, the winner of the outstanding social issue documentary that was put together by a familiar name and talks about turf that has become all too familiar. When Abigail Disney set out to make the armor of light, she focused on guns and Christianity. For some in America, those two are inextricably linked. Yet, is it possible to be both pro-gun and pro-life? In her documentary, Disney follows the story of a reverend as he struggles to piece together how guns should fit into his ministry and how they already do. Let's take a look. As a Christian, what are your feelings when I say the phrase Christians and guns? The Bible's very plain about a man who don't protect his wife and kids is worse than an infidel. Is that a pro-life ethic? The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Let's pray. Father, we know there's a lot of people in this country that would like to register guns and take them away. If we take guns away, people are just going to kill people with something else. So what we need is Jesus and the gospel and a sidearm. This doesn't speak to that. Let's pray. And Abigail Disney joins me now to talk about all this. I, I got to tell you that, that this is such a powerful documentary. But I'm always fascinated when I look at you as a filmmaker, and you've done so much marvelous work over your career and so many different topics. What brought you to this topic? You know, um, when you're producing, um, there's, you don't generate as much as you, um, it comes to you and you shepherd it. Um, I have cared about the gun issue for a really long time. And, you know, if you travel into conflict zones or post-conflict zones, you, know, you really get a good sense of, like, how many weapons there are on this earth um, and, and how they're changing history right in front of us. I mean, would there be an ISIS as powerful if it, as it is if it weren't so easy to lay your hands on so many weapons? So, you know, if you, if you walk that line backwards to where it's coming from, it's coming from here. And uh, I really respect the women I've done films about who are peace builders. And I thought, I want to build peace in my own country. I want to figure out how do we start a conversation about guns. To, to put together a, a compelling documentary, obviously you need a good story, and you need a good cast. And by mm -hmm. cast, I, I don't mean Hollywood cast. I, I mean people who are truly invested and involved right. in the story you're trying to tell. I, I executive produced a couple of documentaries myself uh, for CBS Sports, and I know how difficult that can be. You look at especially your minister here, yeah. and he's such a, 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 a complex and compelling character. Mm -hmm. How did you find him? Uh, yeah, and you do the story and the character backwards, actually. You find the character and the story sort of unfolds in the documentary. You don't really know where that's going to go. So it was, it's all the more important to find the right person. I went looking for anyone in the pro-life movement who would talk to me about this, which was hard for me. You know, I'm a political person. I have my <laughs> very opinionated ideas. Um, but I knew there would be people over there who were in good faith, who really believed what they believed, what they said they believed about the sanctity of human life, and I just wanted to find some who would talk to me in good faith. And there were several, actually, before Rob. But Rob was the only one who wanted to work with me on this. He, everybody else was afraid to say anything out loud. And everybody else basically said, my career is over if I do this, um, because it's such a punitive subject. So Rob got involved. He was very tentative in the beginning. Um, but as the time went on, you could see him really, it, it was really making him passionate and committed, and he brings more and more ardor to it. If you actually really know the order we shot the interviews in, mm -hmm. you can see him becoming more complex and more passionate as the time goes on. Because you can see him wrestling. You yeah. literally on screen can see him wrestling yeah. with all of this. I, I thought it was fascinating. I saw it, something where he had, had done an interview afterwards, and he said, who would have ever thought that I would have become friends yes. with a woman who was very liberal, a yeah. feminist, a pro-choice mm -hmm. person? Yeah. And he talked about the idea of you know, having this, you can have different ideas and concepts. Yeah. It doesn't mean you can't have relationships yeah. with people. And, and that's why I knew I was uniquely placed to make this film, because I was raised in a family I was raised in. I was raised in a very conservative, famously conservative family, a family and a name that's recognized and really revered in right-wing circles, especially among evangelicals. So I just sort of thought, you know what? I, it will give me some, you know, entree. And I think there will be people over there who, in spite of my very public liberalness, might cut me some slack. 
And uh, it did work that way. And, and, and what I said to them invariably was, look, I have my life, but I loved my family. And uh, I know how to love people and in their differences. That's such a great message for our time, how you can yeah. still love people who are different from you. I, I, I've said this before about documentaries. They, they are a journey. A good documentary takes the viewer on a journey of discovery. You're yeah. learning something you didn't know before. But I have a sense that it also takes the producers, and you directed this also. This is your directorial debut with yeah. all the films you've done before. It, takes you, it took you on a journey. What'd you, <laughs> what did you learn that yeah. you didn't expect to learn? Oh, so many things. Yeah, I was thinking the journey, it, it was probably Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a journey I could have <laughs> predicted. Um, I certainly didn't expect it to really, you know, just become great friends with Rob the way I did. I didn't expect us to sit, you know, for hours off camera having really interesting conversations about how he got to where he got to, how I got to. Um, and I did not expect, you know, to be embraced as I've been embraced um, by the evangelical pastors that we're meeting one after another as the film has been out and we're taking it across the country. I, I you know, I, I grew an appreciation for the fact that people over there on the left are just as smug and self-serving and convinced and not entirely honest about their doubts. Um, that happens on the left, it happens on the right, and it takes some courage to stand up for the middle. Um, and uh, so I've taken as much flack from liberals and lefties as, as Rob has from his own colleagues. So there's an enormous Which amount of probably, as a journalist, middle. probably means that you're doing a good job then, if you're yes. getting flack from both ends of the That's story. exactly what I think. Okay. Once again, the film is called The Armor of Light. It, it is, regardless of what your beliefs and feelings might be, it is, it's a very worthwhile film. Abigail Disney, thanks for spending some time with us. Thank you. Thank you.